Yeah. Um, I'm talking with Mr. Koichi Nakano, and uh, Mr. Nakano is a professor of political science at Sovia University in Tokyo, Japan. And Mr. Nakano, um, what does a President Trump mean for Japan? Well, I think it means, at least initially, a lot of confusion. Um, the Japanese policymakers have been caught uh, by surprise, and um, I don't think they are quite ready uh, or they know how to deal with the pres Trump presidency. On the one hand, I think there is a great deal of anxiety uh, whether he's actually going to do everything he said during the campaign or whether uh, he'll cl quickly lose interest in foreign and security policy and leave it to the Republican establishment uh, that uh, the Japanese government uh, is much more familiar with. And so I think uh, there's going to be uh, quite a bit of anxiety, uh, but also sort of a wait and see attitude uh, that is going to be seen in the weeks to come. During the past year, Trump has mentioned that he would retract the American nuclear umbrella, which of course protects Japan. And even if that's not possible for him to do, it still, of course, will cause some unease in Japan. Do you uh, foresee a change in Japan's three non-nuclear principles? Um, I think there is a chance that there's going to be more of a debate about it. Uh, of course, it's not very likely that Japan is going to go nuclear anytime very soon, but uh, certainly the um, anxiety and even agony uh, that is being triggered by the unexpected turn of events, uh, I think, have exposed the vulnerability of Japan's security position uh, in many people's mind. And um, I think the conservative rulers of Japan would no doubt uh, find this also as an opportunity for them to uh, prepare the grounds for a possible uh, introduction of nuclear weapon in Japan, if not now, in the future. Trump has also uh, said repeatedly that he wants to pay for, uh, that he wants his allies to pay for the US troops stationed in the countries of the allies. Now, according to a a recent article by Mainichi, Japan already pays some 70% of the costs of American troops in Japan. If Trump insists to increase this, uh, won't Japan find it more attractive to kick out some of the troops and militarize? And would it mean an end of the pacifist Article 9 in Japan? I think there is going to be somewhat schizophrenic reaction on the part of Japan. On the one hand, I think there is going to be some efforts uh, that are going to be made additionally to already what Japan pays if indeed uh, Trump is going to be serious about uh, putting the, you know, the, uh, asking the Japanese government to pay up more for the continuing presence of the United States. Uh, I don't think the government will be in a position to uh, say no uh, flat out. At the same time, uh, the uh, increased pressure would also give signals to the Japanese uh, policymakers that uh, maybe the U.S. is not going to be around for the foreseeable in the foreseeable future, and therefore they are also going to be uh, given in that sense incentives to push for the uh, further the remilitarization of Japan itself. Uh, so, uh, in both ways, I think uh, the Japanese government would uh, try to sort of stabilize the situation by both uh, both uh, agreeing more to the American demands while also uh, pushing things in the direction of more fully militarized and independent Japanese foreign and security policy. In a way, this is something... Uh in the direction of what Prime Minister Abe already wanted to go, right? So what are the benefits and also the dis disadvantages of a President Trump to Prime Minister Abe? Um, I think um, 
the fact that they don't know him very well and um, the fact that he doesn't seem to know or have even much interest in East Asia, he, if anything, what he has said during the campaign, which is not much at all about Japan, uh, seems to come even from the 1980s when the Japanese economy was much stronger. So uh, maybe his own understanding and memory of Japan is really dated more than you know uh, 20 years. Um, and um, I think that, of course, is a reason for uh, anxiety in the Jap on the Japanese side. Uh, but at the same time, uh, given that uh, Trump doesn't have much interest in foreign policy, uh, I think the Japanese policymakers would be hoping that uh, Trump would end up delegating much of the East Asia and Japan policy of the new government to the usual suspects in the Republican establishment. And um, uh, that would in fact be very favorable to the Japanese conservative leaders, uh, given that they have always had much stronger ties with the Republican uh, officials uh, than the Democratic side in any case. Uh, so uh, maybe the two conservative parties would uh, be able to come to a fairly uh, well stable situation uh, that is mutually uh, satisfactory. To also talk a little bit about the geopolitical, sorry, geopolitic, <laughs> the geopolitical situation in um, in Asia at large. Uh, Trump has mentioned that he would like to um, have a ban on Muslims. Now, that's unlikely to happen because of the American Constitution, but still, uh, four of the five nations uh, with the largest Muslim population are actually in Asia. Um, there is a big chance, of course, that these nations may distance themselves more from, uh, from Washington, what would that mean to Asia? Well, there's going to be, I think, um, um, kind of psychological alienation uh, in many Asian societies further away from the United States. Um, I mean, to a degree, the damage has already been done. The moral credibility of the United States has been badly shaken by the rise of Trump uh, so far already. And the fact that he'll be in government uh, and, you know, he would continue to be associated with all the outrageous comments uh, that he made during the campaigns, even if he starts to mend his ways and become uh, rather more polite and uh, less offensive, uh, I think it would be very hard to... Uh, get the sen to get rid of the sense that he's a bigot uh, with very strongly racist views uh, that uh, would hurt uh, the feelings, of course, of, the, of many Asians. Uh, and um, in that regard, uh, you know, Trump may be ending up uh, sort of uh, pushing through a more introverted uh, isolationist foreign policy of the United States partially out of his own and promise, but also partially because of the consequence of a more detached feeling that is going to become increasingly pervasive in Asia and beyond. Which would mean that America will not have as much a present presence in Asia as it did before, right? What would that mean for, um, what would the consequences be of that for Taiwan and Japan's territory? problems with China and Russia? I think the uncertainty that is going to come in place, and of course, uh, as we all know, the Trump victory is the preferred, was the preferred, uh, uh, preferred outcome for both China and Russia uh, to begin with, because they see the uncertainty as an opportunity to test waters whether America is going to be withdrawing. Uh, so uh, at least for the short and medium term, there's going to be great uncertainty in East Asian region as well, with the dominant powers uh, trying to see how far they can go. 
uh, and whether Trump is really going to pull back American presence from East Asia. Uh, and um, at the same time, uh, that perception is going to push the smaller countries and even including Japan, the uh, allies of the United States in East Asia, uh, to, uh, to, to stabilize the situation by, uh, by themselves adopt, adopting a rather more hawkish stance on, on, on many issues, quite conceivably. So um, unless we are very careful, uh, there is a real danger of, uh, of unwanted uh, risks uh, getting elevated uh, fairly rapidly uh, as a consequence of the move, depending on how far and how fast uh, Trump would put his words into actual policy. So to summarize, a lot of uncertainty and lots of possible tension here in Asia and big changes possibly here in Japan itself. I think so. Um, the, um, the U.S. presence uh, has been part, partially, of course, a source of tension in East Asia, but it has also been a stabilizing force uh, at a time when the regional power balance has been shifting. Uh, so, uh, you know, particularly if there is going to be an abrupt change, uh, that might cause a great deal of um, tension to be uh, risen uh, very fast. Thank you very much, Mr. Nakano. Thank you.